while Friday's landslide referendum victory answered one key question for the country, it immediately poses several more for the political establishment. And while the historic vote has brought an end to the uncertainty hanging over Ireland for 35 years, the reality is the political arena will now be thrown back into that same uncertainty as it comes to terms with the result's consequences. Will the 12 weeks legislation pass or will it become the last stand of the no campaign? Tenace Simon Coveney and Fianna Fáil leader Michael campaign for a yes vote in Cork. Can Michael Martin drag his party, in some cases kicking and screaming, towards a new liberal dawn, or will Fianna Fáil now reposition itself as the true home of conservative Ireland? Was Mary Lou Macdonald's referendum performance enough to detox Sinn Féin from its violent past and make it a genuine future coalition option? And, speaking of repositioning, which of the main political players both across the parties and within Fine Gael itself will be able to shove themselves most firmly into the post-referendum spotlight, increasing their future political chances in the process? The first question is the most relevant and easiest to answer. While current Dale's support falls just shy of what is needed to pass the 12 weeks bill, this is set to change next month when Sinn Fein passes Art FHE acute eyes motion for its 23 TDs, minus pro-life TDs Peter Toybin and Carol Nolan, to support the law. The threat of more than half of Fianna Fáil's TDs and more than a third of Fine Gael counterparts also being opposed to 12 weeks, in addition to independents like the Healy Rays and Maddie McGrath means delay tactics are inevitable. Minister for Health Simon Harris and Shin finds Peter Toibin debate on prime time last week. However, given the scale of the referendum result, this is unlikely to occur in large numbers, with Fianna Fail pro-life TDs Thomas Byrne, Anne Rabbit and Michael McGrath saying they will not ignore the public's wishes, meaning barring a few bruises the legislation should pass relatively safely. Whether Fianna Fail itself remains safe is another question entirely. In a brave step earlier this year, party leader Michael Martin publicly declared his referendum hand, saying in a detailed and considered speech he would vote yes and supports the 12 weeks legislation. Unfortunately, as shown by the recent Dale votes and the fact just over half of the NFL supporters told an exit poll they voted no, the majority of his party disagrees. And while the referendum result will be a short-term fillip to a justified Mr. Martin, there will undoubtedly be Fianna Fáil colleagues who feel the best chance of survival is to turn back to conservatism and repackage the party as a new home for the not insignificant third of no voters who have no other place to go. Such a dilemma will be playing on Mr. Martin's mind as he faces a separate growing opposition battle with Sinn Féin, and specifically Mary Lou Macdonald. Shin Fine leader Mary Lou McDonald, together for yes. Throughout the referendum, Ms. McDonald was, like Mr. Martin, a staunch pro-choice supporter, the only difference being her party was fully behind her, officially at least. While the position was genuine, it was also politically motivated, with the referendum meaning Sinn Féin's image is now another step away from its violent past in the eyes of those oh-so-important under-30s who voted in record numbers on Friday. And, unless other political leaders find a way to react, further Sinn Féin general election gains, forcing larger parties to do a coalition deal with what remains their political devil. How the Mary Lou Macdonald question is addressed will have an impact on the last issue still up for debate, namely, which politician will gain most from the referendum. And in terms of the wider political scene, this could be the most interesting question of all. Taisha Leo Varadkar placing his vote in Friday's abortion referendum. In theory, Taisha Leo Varadkar should be the one to bask in the glory of long-sought constitutional change. However, at the weekend the true crowd favorite was Health Minister Simon Harris, whose all-in campaign approach will not have gone unnoticed by those who mark up incoming politicians out for future greatness. 
nor presumably by the politically astute Mr. Varadkar, who will be all too aware of the new smiling rival by his side. One definitive answer for the public, then, and plenty of still unanswered questions as the abortion debate enters its final, definitive stage.